The Predator of Love. This is my Ubel Predator Plant deck list. And if you want to see this deck in action, then be sure to click the card above to go and check out this video. Now, this deck was actually suggested to me in the comments by BPD Gamer. So thank you very much. Shout out to him. He told me about Predator Plants and how well he thinks it would work with Ubel. And he was absolutely right. This deck is fantastic. And I really love the synergy that goes with the Predator Plants and the Ubel cards, and especially the Predator Plant Fusions just work really well with Ubel, um, and they make great use of Super Polymerization. So let's get straight into this. To start off, we of course have one copy of each of the original forms of Ubel. You only need one copy of each of these, um, having more just becomes too clunky. You might want to include two of the original Ubel, or even two of the Terran Carnet, now that we have the uh, new field spell. Two of those really works, but you definitely want one of each, because we are running the new field spell, so having one of each makes this um, just deck work a lot better. And after that we have three copies of Spirit of Ubel. Spirit of Ubel is the only one that can special summon herself, making her a great choice, and is always the first one that we're going to go into, so having three copies is a must. Spirit of Ubel's effect lets us add a Ubel spell or trap from our deck to her hand when she's special summoned as well, which again, you gotta have three of them. Next up for our Ubel cards, we have one copy of Samsara Regenerating Lotus. Normally in the Ubel deck, you would want to run three of these cards because you definitely want to see this. However, in this version of the deck, since the uh, Predator Plant engine uses up your normal summon, we don't actually want to see Samsara regenerating as much as we normally would because we don't really want to use her for our normal summon. We want to use our Predator Plants to normal summon um, and then special summon our regenerating Lotus if we have a card that can do it for us or just summon her if we don't have the Predator Plant engine. <coughs> Finally, for our Ubel monsters, we have the new Infernal Grave Squirmer. If you have not seen this card, check it out. It is insane. This card is fantastic and an absolute must-have for the Ubel engine. With this card's effect, if you control a Fiend monster, quick effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. Then you can destroy one monster you control that is Ubel or mentions it. Then, um, its other effect is that you can banish this card from your graveyard, special summon a fiend monster with zero attack or defense from your hand or graveyard, except Infernal Grave Scrowman. You can only use each effect once per turn. So this card is really fantastic because it finally allows you Bell to have extensions. It allows you Bell to extend off of the normal you Bell players going into Super Fusion or just summoning a field of you Bells. It makes you Bell actually really, really good and opens us up to more Link summons because one of the biggest problems with the Ubel deck originally was that it was very hard to go into Link Summons, you couldn't get out a lot of monsters on your first turn, but now with Infernal Grave Squirmer and with the Field Spell as well, it makes it very, very easy. Grave Squirmer gives us an extra monster by himself, and then you link him away, and then he can special summon another monster from your graveyard, allowing you to also Link Climb as well, which is just fantastic. So that's all for the Ubel monsters, we only have one copy of him as well because he's very easy to search and you don't really need him. Having more of him is not a bad thing, definitely, you could run up to three of this card, um, but I found that one copy works perfectly fine for the deck since he's so searchable. Next we have our Predator Plant engine, so of course we start with three copies of Predator Plant or for a Scorpio. If you don't know what this card does, when this card is normal or special summoned, you can send a monster from your hand to the graveyard to special summon a Predator Plant monster from your deck except for himself. This card opens up our main Predator Plant combo and the main combo of this deck, um, but when you, if you don't know already, when you summon off for Scorpio, the monster that we're going to go for is our Darling Tony and Cobra, which we'll get to in a second, and again, it is our main opener. We definitely want three of those in combinations with two copies of Lone Fire Blossom. Of course, Lone Fire, um, you can normal summon this card, then you contribute it to immediately special summon the Orphra Scorpio straight from your deck. So that's why we run um, two copies of those, so we basically have five Orphra Scorpios in our deck to start off with. You definitely want to see this card in your opening hand, because when you summon him, he then special summons your Predator Plant Darlingtonia Cobra. Darlingtonia Cobra's effect. If this card is special summoned by the effect of a Predator Plant monster, you can add one fusion spell card from your deck to your hand. Um, however, this effect of Predator Plant Darlingtonia Cobra can only be used once per duel, which is why we only run one copy of this card. 
This card, um, you want to special summon it, so you don't want it in your hand, you don't want to have to normal summon it or get rid of it first. Um, if it is in your hand, there is another way you can special summon it from the graveyard, but it's better to just have this card in your deck. So you really don't want to see this in your hand. We only run one, and of course its effect is once per duel, so we definitely don't have need for multiple copies of this card. Some people do like to run two, just to make sure that there's one in the deck. Um, but I wouldn't, it just uses up space, and again, if we draw this card, we can send it to the graveyard, we can special summon it later, um, there are ways around that to still get off its effect, so just one is enough, just one is all that you need. Next up we have one copy of Predator Plant Calamitous New. Clamido Sunju. Sunju! Oh, it's a Sunju! Oh, I just got that. This whole time I've been calling it Clamido Snow. I don't know how to pronounce that. But anyway, this card's effect is really good and one of the main cards that we're going to be going into with this deck. With this card's effect, during your main phase, you can fusion summon a dark fusion monster from your extra deck using cards on the field and monsters from your hand field or monsters with a predator counter that your opponent controls as fusion material. So that's a little bit complicated. Basically, he's super fusion but lets you fuse monsters in your hand and monsters your opponent controls with a predator counter as well as all the monsters on your field. Plus, as a bonus, monsters with a predator counter that you use as fusion materials are treated as dark, meaning even if your opponent's not running a dark deck, um, if they have predator counters on them, you can still use them as fusion material to go into things like Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, who requires two dark monsters. So, Kalama de Sunju. That's, I prefer Clamor de Snoo. Clamor de Sanju is way too many syllables. Clamor de Snoo, his effect is one of the key parts of this deck and will enable us to go into our big boss monster, that being Draco Stapelia. So we'll get into that combo a little later on. The final Predator Plant monster that we have is Predator Plant Cordyceps. Again, we only run one of these cards because we don't want to see them in our hand. We want to special summon them from the deck. Predator Plant Cordyceps Effect. During your standby phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target two level 4 or lower Predator Plant monsters in your graveyard and special summon them. Also, keep in mind for the rest of this turn, you cannot special summon monsters except fusion monsters, nor normal summon or set any monsters. So, be careful of when you use this card because I've forgotten about that a couple times, but Cordyceps Effect is really, really good and one of the ways that we can special summon our Darlingtonia Cobra if we have him in our hand, send him to the graveyard bring him back with Cordyceps. Now with Cordyceps you don't really, norm normally you don't want to summon this card, we don't want to see it in um, in our hand and we don't really want to summon it from the deck. There are some situations if you already have the other combo pieces, like if you already have a uh, Clamor de Snoo in your hand then you might special summon Cordyceps from your deck instead of him. But we want to send this card from our deck to the graveyard with the effect of Predator Planning, which we'll get to later. And this card just allows us to extend and have more combos during our second turn of the game. Finally, for our monsters, we of course run three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Some people have, no, not some, one person has said to me, um, has asked why we, like, you know, suggested that instead of running Ash Blossom and Imperm, we run uh, Board Breakers. The reason that I do run Ash Blossom is because she can shut down certain decks, maybe not all of the meta decks nowadays, but she can definitely be a hindrance, especially with bad hands, um, and she can single-handedly shut down an entire deck, um, and quite a lot of decks too. Maybe not, again, maybe not the top meta decks, but quite a lot of decks, and she does interrupt, um, and it's just another interruption. This deck likes to end on multiple interruptions, um, to really just stun, yeah, it's, it's basically a stun deck, right? So having this interruption from the hand with Ash Blossom is a really good choice. Plus we have plenty of board wipes in the form of super polymerization. All right, so that is all for our monsters. Very basic Predator Plant engine, very basic Ubel engine with a couple extras from the Predator Plants that just really work well with this deck. Now moving on to our spells, we first have three copies of the new Ubel Field spell, Nightmare Throne. First of all, how good is that artwork? That thing is amazing, and when you play it on field, it fills the field, just fantastic. I absolutely love it, that is gorgeous. So this card is really, 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 really good, and you definitely need three of them. When this card is activated, you can take one Fiend monster with zero attack and defense from your deck, and either add it to your hand or destroy it. So this effect alone gets us a extra summon out, it gets our Ubel combo started however we want. So there are two things you can do with this. You can add your uh, Samsara Regenerating Lotus to your hand, get your Ubel combo off. You would only do this however if you don't have access to Scorpio. 
Um, the other thing you can do is simply destroy Spirit of Ubel in your deck, which will immediately float into the regular form of Ubel, which gets us another monster on the field and gets our Ubel combo started. And the final thing that you can do if you have um, other access to Ubel instead of that is you can also add Infernal Grave Swimmer to your hand, which can then special summon itself. So. Nightmare Throne is a rotor for the deck, it's a rotor for the Ubel deck and gets us any of our cards and can immediately get a monster out on the field which we can then use for Link Summons and the rest of the plays. The other effect of this card is if a face up Ubel monster you control leaves the field by a card effect once per turn you can add to your hand one of your Ubel monsters that is banished or in your deck or graveyard whose original level is one higher or one lower than one of the monsters that left the field. That's a little bit confusing, we'll get to it soon. Um, then you can special summon it, ignoring its summoning condition. That effect is absolutely insane. That gets us another monster on the field, which is just really fantastic again for the Link plays. It helps us to extend our Ubel plays and go into um, other monsters that we might want to have on the field for our first turn rather than Ubel. It also helps us to just keep Ubel on the field a hell of a lot longer. So the best time to use that effect is when um, Terra Incarnate leaves the field, basically. The reason is because when Terra Incarnate leaves the field, its effect will then special summon the Ultimate Nightmare by itself, and then you can use the field spell to immediately special summon your Spirit of Ubel, which if you haven't already this turn, Spirit of Ubel's effect will then activate getting you a card to your hand, and it will also just reset the loop, of course, because when Spirit of Ubel is destroyed, you um, get to special summon the original Ubel. That is why I would run two copies of Terra Incarnate rather than two copies of original Ubel, but in this deck we're only running one of each, and one of each is all you need. That is enough. So I would definitely use the field spell in response to Terra Incarnate leaving the field. Um, there are certain situations where you might do something else, like you might use it in response to Spirit of Ubel to special summon Terra of Incarnate, but again, I would choose it for Terra of Incarnate, um, and of course you can use it for Ultimate Nightmare to reverse back into Terra Incarnate, who will then go back into Ultimate Nightmare, but it's just not as many players and doesn't take us right back to the beginning unlike if you use it when Terra Incarnate leaves the field. So that is the new field spell Nightmare Throne, absolutely insane, allows us to go into all sorts of plays and allows us to start our Ubel combos just by special summoning a Ubel straight off the bat, destroying it from our deck. It's really, really good, this card is insane. The other card that starts our Ubel combos is our two copies of Nightmare Pain. Now that we have um, Nightmare Throne, we don't need three copies of Nightmare Pain anymore, two is enough. Generally, you're going to search this card to your hand with the effect of Spirit of Ubel, um, but if you do start with it in your hand as well as either Ubel or Spirit of Ubel, you can use it to start off your combo. You can activate it, destroy the Ubel in your hand, who will then special summon the next form of Ubel from your deck. So Nightmare Pain starts off our Ubel combos as well, and of course it also allows us to add uh, Ubel cards to your hand, such as your Infernal Grave Squirmer is usually the best choice for that. Um, and it allows us to deal damage by attacking with Ubel and forces our opponent to attack Ubel. So Nightmare Pain does a lot in one card, definitely needed. You want two of this card, because if you lose it, you're going to want another one, because again, it allows our Ubels to deal damage while they attack. Finally, for the Ubel spells, we have one copy of Mature Chronicle. This card is just, it's good. It's a good card. Um, it allows us to extend by special summoning Ubel from our graveyard. Keep in mind that is the original Ubel, not any other form. It allows us to add banished cards to our hand, which um, works really well with Pot of Desires, which we also run in the deck, and basically enables us to run Pot of Desires in this deck, which is also really good. Um, it can also banish card from our deck. We don't use that effect very much. You can use it to destroy a card on the field, which can enable you to extend your Ubel players by destroying one of your Ubel cards, or you can destroy one of your opponent's cards as well, such as their back row. This is our main back row removal too, and it allows us to add super polymerization from your deck to your hand, which is never a bad thing. So Mature Chronicle, really good card. We definitely want this. Getting five counters on it with the new Ubel support is insanely, insanely easy to pull off, so you can use any of those effects like as soon as you want, basically. With Nightmare Throne, that gets us two Ubels out, or two, yeah, two Ubel summons. Infernal Grave Squirmer also gets us two Ubel summons, that's four right off the bat. And then you have the basic Ubel summon when it's destroyed, so that's five, plus probably six. You can usually go into seven in one turn. 
it's ridiculous now that we have this new support. So Mature Chronicle, definitely want this card in your deck and is one of the cards that we search for if we already have everything else that we need. Next up, let's take a look at our fusion spells. The main strategy of Predator Plants is of course fusion summoning and one of the best strategies with you, Bell, is super fusion. So let's take a look at this. First we have one copy of Instant Fusion. This card is going to be the main card that we add to our hand with the effect of our uh, Darlingtonia Cobra and its effect allows us to special summon a level 5 or lower fusion monster from the extra deck. That would be of course our Predaplan Ambulamaid, <laughs> that thing. So basically Instant Fusion is the main card that we're going to add with Darlingtonia Cobra's effect if you don't have it already and um, that really just starts off our combo which again you can see in the video in the card above. Go ahead and click that to check that out. Next up we have two copies of Predator Prime Fusion. This card is kind of insane. It is really really good card, especially in the U-Bell deck. This card is another copy of Super Polymerization. It basically enables us to run six Super Polys if we really wanted, which we don't because we have so much searching for um, for fusion spells basically. So Predator Prime Fusion. If a Predator Plant monster is on the field, Fusion summon one dark fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from either field as material, including two or more dark monsters you control. So in most cases with Predator Prime Fusion, if you're running a Predator Plant deck, this card doesn't really go into much. Um, that's that whole super fusion effect of it where you can use your opponent's monsters doesn't apply much. There is only one monster that you can do with that, and that is Predator Plant Trivova the the tri Trivive Vivera. Trivive. You you could you do you you want. Predator Plant Trivive Veritum is basically the only Predator Plant monster that you can um, use one of your opponent's monsters with for this effect. However, this doesn't restrict us to special summoning Predator Plant fusion monsters. This can also allow us to special summon our Ubel Dust Airwig Lieve Watcher, which means. This card is basically another super poly. As long as we have two monsters on our field, including a Predator Plant monster, we can steal all of our opponent's effect monsters, which is just, just beautiful. And it doesn't even have cost, right? Like, unlike super poly, which you have to discard a card, this card can be activated straight away, no cost. You just have to have a Predator Plant monster on the field, not even on your field, which is fantastic. This card is really, really good in this deck and is what enables such insane plays by combining new bell and predator plants. It is so good and I love it. Next up we have two copies of super polymerization. Of course, definitely want to see this card. This enables us to go into our ultimate most powerful um, super fusion monster and of course enables us to steal all of our opponent's dark monsters for the summon of any of our predator plant fusion monsters. This card is fantastic. I shouldn't need to say, can't be negated. It's great, definitely need two of them at least. Next up for our Predator Plant spells, we have two copies of Predator Practice. This card enables us to go into our Samsara Regenerating Lotus as well as a Predator Plant monster. So with this card, you can special summon a Predator Plant monster from your hand, which is really good. And then you can add one Predat card from your deck to your hand except Predator Practice. So that is a really, really good effect. Gets us a special summon on board, which is normally going to be our Scorpio, but could also be our uh, Clammy Disnu as well. And it gets a Predat card from our deck to the hand, which again, could be our Offer Scorpio if we don't have it already, or could be uh, like our Predator Prime Fusion, our Predator Planning, or even our Predator Ponyx. This card is a really good card. And of course, if you special summon Scorpio with its effect, you can then proceed to normal summon your Samsara Regenerating Lotus to get the Ubel play started. Next up we have one copy of Predaponyx. Normally in a Predaplant deck you would want to see this card a lot more often, but since this isn't pure Predaplants, um, there's not as much need to have this. However, it is still a really good card when it comes up. Once per turn you can special summon a level 4 or lower Predaplant monster from your hand or graveyard, but negate its effects. Also during the standby phase, you pay 800 life points or destroy this card. Basic maintenance cost of 800 life points, no problem. <coughs> the biggest problem with this is that it negates the effects of the monster that you summon, meaning that it doesn't really go into much. It allows us to go into our link plays, it gives us extra link material, and of course gives us an extra fusion material in the form of a Predator Plant monster, which allows us to activate Predator Prime fusion as well. Um, but it's just, 
It's not all that fantastic. It's definitely something that you want to see a once per term reborn for predator plants, always good, but not something that you want to see all the time. You know, we don't need three copies of it. We don't want to have too many in our hand. One is perfectly fine and works with the deck. Next up, we have one copy of One for One. This enables us to special summon our regenerating Lotus, or now we can also special summon Infernal Grave Squirmer. Either way, that enables us to really go into our uh, U Bell place. Or in weird emergencies, you might want a special summon Cordyceps as well. That is an option. I don't know why you would though, but you might, you might, you never know. Next up, we have one copy of Terraforming to add our Field Spell to the hand. Again, the Field Spell is absolutely insane and starts off our U Bell combos. So we really want to see this in our hand to get those U Bell players going, enable our Link Summons, and just enable our U Bell with Nightmare Pain to protect our other monsters as well. Finally, for our spells, we run three copies of Pot of Desires. Originally, I had Allure of Darkness in this deck, um, because this deck runs a lot of dark monsters, you know, it's a good card to have, but I found that running Desires was actually a lot better for a couple reasons. One, Allure of Darkness um, costs a card in our hand, we have to banish a dark monster from our hand, and normally, I don't want to lose a dark monster, right? If, I, if I'm running, if I activate Allure of Darkness, it's because I need a monster in our hand, which means I might have to then banish it, so that's not always a great trade-off. Um, but Desires, however, just lets us draw two cards, no cost of any card in our hand, because again, we like to have cards in our hand, and um, we also need cards in our hand for Super Poly, which, you know, and Eternal Favorite, so don't want to lose cards in our hand. Um, and Desires can banish 10 cards from our deck, which thins out our deck a lot and just gets rid of things that we don't need at the time, because we might already have them, and draw two cards. You shouldn't be too concerned about losing the cards that you have. Um, there are some concerns of losing one-offs, like your uh, Grave Squirmer, or especially Darlingtonia Cobra, but I think that drawing two cards is usually a lot more beneficial, and you have more plays that you can go into even if you lose those integral cards. It's not that bad. Also, we of course have Mature Chronicle. Mature Chronicle with at least two counters can add one of our banished cards to our hand, even if they're face down, which makes Pot of Desires really, really good in a Ubel deck, especially with all the new cards, getting two counters on Mature Chronicle is like, easy as anything. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. Um, the other reason we run Desires is because, you know, you don't have to use it at the start of your main phase, unlike Extravagance, which just makes it more versatile. Um, we can play all our Ubel plays first, get Mature Chronicle, get those two counters, and then go into Pot of Desires, which again, um, gets more cards out of our deck, thins our deck out a lot faster and better, gets us all the cards that we need out of the deck before we banish them, and then gets us two cards, and if we lose something important like our uh, Darlingtonia Cobra or Instant Fusion or even your like Predator Prime Fusion Super Poly, you can add those to your hand by removing two counters from a True Chronicle. So, Pot of Desires works really well in this deck. Finally, we have our Traps. We have one copy of Predator Planning. This card is really, really good. Um, the main reason that I run it is to send a Predator Plant from the deck to the graveyard. That's its first effect to activate it. And the card we would send, of course, is Predator Plant Cordyceps, who can then special summon Predator Plants from our graveyard with their effects intact. The normal cards that we're going to summon with the effect of Cordyceps would be uh, Clammy to Snoo and basically just anything else. Or if we haven't already special summoned Cobra, your special summon Cobra is another option. So Clammy to Snoo is the best card to go into with your uh, Cordyceps because he enables a Super Fusion as well. And Predator Planning then puts um, Predator Counters on all monsters on the field, which is really good. It resets their levels down to 1 if they were 2 or higher, so if your opponent has XCs plays, they don't anymore, which is really, really good. And um, it also has a different effect that if you fusion summon a dark monster while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this card from the graveyard, target one card on the field, and destroy it. This can enable some new bell plays, but of course can also be used to destroy our opponent's back row, which is fantastic. Predator planning, definitely good. And if you use it while you have a uh, Drago Spellier on the field, then basically all your opponent's monsters' effects, activated effects, get negated, which is Fantastic. Really good card, definitely wanted in the deck. Only need one though because generally we're going to search this card to our hand with one of our fusion monsters. We don't want to see it too often, it's not that good, but it is definitely worth having. Finally for our traps and our main deck, we have one copy of Eternal Favorite. I have talked about this card so many times with all the Ubel decks that I've done. This card is insane, allows us um, extra extension with our special summon of a Ubel monster that is banished or in the graveyard, which is really good, and is basically another copy of Super Polymerization, which, you know, you always gotta have that. 
All right, now let's take a quick look at our extra deck. The extra deck is, of course, the bread and butter of this deck. You know, it's the end goal for this deck is to go into the extra deck. So first of all, we of course have two copies of Yubel, the Eternal Love Watcher. Um, this card is the best super poly target in the game. It even works with Predator Prime Fusion, which is fantastic. And you can very likely summon two of these cards by using all of your opponent's effect monsters, which is just really, really good. So you definitely need two of these. We have one copy of Greedy Venom Fusion Dragon. Um, this card is just kind of a bit of a monster, can like reduce our opponent's attack points to zero, which is great, and it negate their effects. Fantastic card, not the best um, because its effect isn't a quick effect, but it does float if it's destroyed. You can banish a level 8 or higher dark monster from your graveyard, which we have plenty of in the form of Yubel, and then special summon this card from the graveyard. So this card actually works better in our Yubel deck rather than a Predator Plant deck, which is really good. Another reason that Predator Plants and Yubel work together. Its fusion materials is a Predator Plant monster and a dark monster whose original level is 8 or higher. Again, we have a lot of those. We have like how many? Six of those in our main deck as well as a bunch in our extra deck. Very easy to summon. Next up we have one copy of Predator Plant Treviver Veritum. This is one of the main cards that we're going to go into after Draco Stapalia. Um, when our opponent summons a dark monster, we can Predator Prime Fusion, eat their monster, and summon this card, which is fantastic. It is the only Predator Plant monster that you can go into with Predator Prime Fusion using an opponent's monster, which makes it just, you gotta have it in the deck along with, um, of course, you Bell, and it has a cool effect that gives him a major attack boost. Next, we have one copy of Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. I shouldn't have to say much about this card. Two dark monsters makes it a great super poly target to use our opponent's monsters, and he just has a really good effect which is fantastic. Next we have one copy of our main boy Predator Plant Draco Stapelia. This card is really easy to go into with this deck and I'll explain in just a minute um, but this card's effect basically quick effect you can put a Predator counter on one of our opponent's monsters and negate the activated effects of opponent's monsters that have Predator counters. This is our main um, negate and combining it with Predator Planning can shut down our opponent's entire field. That's just really good um, and gets Predator counters on our opponent's monsters to use with Play Me Just Know as well. Finally, for our fusion monsters, we have one copy of Predator Plant Ambular Melodies. The main reason that we're running Ambular Melodies is because he starts off our main combo. So the main combo of this deck is to go Orphra Scorpio, Special Summon Darling Tonia Cobra, add Instant Fusion to our hand. Then we use Instant Fusion to go into Ambular Melodies, and with its effect you can add a Predator Plant monster or one Predab spell or trap from your deck or graveyard or face-up extra deck to your hand when this card is fusion summoned, which means you can then use this effect to add our Predator Prime Fusion or our Predator Planning to our hand. Really good effect, um, gets us our Predator Prime Fusion if we don't have it already, or our Predator Planning if we don't have that, and that's, you know, definitely something that we want. Possibly even more than Predator Prime, def no, not, not more than Predator Prime. If you have Predator Prime or Super Poly, though, you can definitely go into Predator Planning. Next up, his second effect is that you can target one monster your opponent controls with a Predator counter, which is great if you're going second, or one monster you control tributed, and if you do, special summon a Predator Plant monster from your deck. So what you're going to do then is tribute your Darling Tonia Cobra or your Orphra Scorpio and special summon Predator Plant Clammy to Snoo. Clammy to Snoo can then, of course, fusion summon right off the bat. So you're going to fuse Clammy to Snoo with your Ambular Melodies, which would go to the graveyard anyway, and that will immediately get out our Predator Plant Draco Stapelia. So just like that, we have a one card combo to get out Draco Stapelia which is just really good with this deck. I'm sure that someone else must have worked that out, but I've never seen it before, so if I'm the first, go me. That's fantastic, I worked that out, but I really doubt it. But still, that is a one card path to Drago Stapelia, who is our main monster in the game. Fantastic. Next up for our Link Monsters. We don't go into our Link Monsters very much, but you mainly go into them with the Ubel combos, which has insane Link potential. Um, and yeah, it's just really good to have an extra Link on the field and can also be used for the OTK. So, first of all, we have one copy of Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Um, getting four monsters on the field, especially with the new Ubel cards, is not hard at all. And she will allow us to steal one of our opponent's monsters, which is never a bad thing. Next we have one copy of Access Code Talker, this card is an OTK beast, definitely gotta have him, 
One copy of Black Cluster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos. Again, same reason, really strong monster, good for an OTK, good for just finishing off the opponent, and he works well with level seven or higher monsters, which we have a bunch of. We have one copy of Nightmare Unicorn. Its removal effect is fantastic and works with Mascarena. Uh, one copy of Nightmare Phoenix. Same reason, removal effect for back row, really good, works with Mascarena. One copy of SP Little Knight, again, Works with Mascarena, removal effects, fantastic. One copy of McCracka from the Underworld. This card is, I found, really, really good with Ubel. Um, and enables us to special summon any of our Ubel monsters, or, you know, our ones that can be special summoned. Um, it enables us to special summon our Ubel monsters from the graveyard, which is just a good effect and enables us to extend a bit more. Unfortunately, can't be used as link material to turn its link summon, but still lets us extend and get out our Ubel cards anyway. Another good use of of McCracka is to get rid of the Terra Incarnate that might be on your field. Um, you can link this into McCracka and then still bring back a Ubel, like Spirit of Ubel, from your graveyard. It's just a good card to have to um, really help out our Ubel players. And finally, we of course have one copy of IP Masquerana. This deck is very much a stun deck. It's all about stunning the opponents, shutting down their cards, and keeping control of the field. Masquerana does that fantastically. She enables us to link summon during the opponent's turn and gives our link monster um, um, good protection as well, which makes her great to go with any of our boss monsters and also great with any of our destruction slash removal monsters. Um, you can straight up go into Little Knight, Nightmare Phoenix, uh, Unicorn, or Unicorn, just off of Masquerana and one other monster during the opponent's turn to then get rid of one of their monsters, or with like a Little Knight's effect, can get rid of two cards, which is just fantastic. So that is all for this deck. Um, this video has gone on a little bit longer than I would have liked, but there was a lot to talk about. So again, if you want to see this deck in action, check out the card above or the uh, playlist in the end card. And another shout out to... <clears throat> Sorry, I stumbled that. And another shout out to BPD Gamer who suggested this deck to me. I have had a lot of fun building and creating this deck, and it works really well. I really like it, especially with these new cards. We're definitely, like, they came in at just the right time and really just improved this deck. It wasn't working as well before them, but now that we have them, it's just so good. It's so good. It gets out our super polys easy, gets you bell out. It's fantastic. This deck is a lot of fun to play, so try it out for yourself. If you would have any suggestions or changes to this deck, I'm no credit plan expert, so let me know down in the comments. That would be great. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. My name is Vincent Karen. Until next time, see ya.